Hello my darlings, I hope you're all doing very, very well. First of all, happy September 1st. Who's excited? I am. <laughs> this is my absolute favourite time of year now from September to December. Everything gets dark and cold and you get to stay indoors and be surrounded by blankets and candles. You get to eat snacks and put your favourite comfort shows on and just be cosy and everything is orange. There is a beautiful warm glow wherever you go. I also get to decorate my filming room like this. Welcome. This is now called the Cozy Cave. We've gone for more orange cozy theme this year. Obviously there is still quite a bit of Halloween going on in here but I wanted it to be a little bit more on the cozy side. So when you come and watch my videos you get to feel that orange glow of autumn fall and then obviously leading into the more colder winter months. I always want my videos to give you a somewhat cozy feeling even though sometimes the topics I talk about are quite heavy. I still want you to feel comfortable when watching my videos if possible of course. So I hope this like orange cozy glow is um treating you well right now. I just want to make sure that you are all cozy right now in this moment. I hope you have your snacks and your beverages and if it's not too hot where you are right now because I know there is a few places in the world where it is still very very hot and this is probably you know out of taste right now but um if possible get a blanket okay or if you're hot right now make sure a fan or aircon is blowing on you right now. Anyway apologies for rambling about being cozy and comfy. In today's video we'll be talking about another problematic tattoo artist who goes by the name of Matt Clemmer. There has been a few rumblings in the past month or so that I have seen while browsing social media about Matt but there's never been enough information for me to make a full on video until a post that I saw earlier today. So I was like right let me compile everything that I have Come across and um, we can make a full video now. So who is Matt? Well Matt is a tattoo artist to start off with obviously otherwise I would not be making this video. He's a business owner, he also is a co-host of a podcast, he's a motivational speaker, a husband and a father and also a cult member. Yeah. Oh, it's spicy up in here today, all right? There isn't just this orange glow from my room. The spiciness of this is also creating a glow. So like I was saying, I had been seeing some rumblings about Matt on social media. One TikTok that I saw over a month ago by Jordane Le Fay come up on my For You page. Jordane, I hope I'm saying her name right but I'm gonna go with Jordane. But Jordane is also a tattoo artist and in a TikTok that she uploaded a month ago, she documents who Matt is and what he has done in the past. Y'all thought Tattoo Gate was a big deal? Well, we have another predator in our midst, so let's talk about it. This here's Matt Clemmer. He's the owner of Tattoo Business Mastery or TBM, Tattoo Guardians Podcast, Landmark Forum, and Tattoo or the Tattoo Shop Aisle 9. And he is a predator and a creep. I wanted to look into Matt a little bit more just to see who he is and what his deal is. Matt is, how do I put this politely? He's your typical hairy white spiritual guy. You know the type. I don't want to stereotype, but he fits a mold pretty well. He has 14.4k followers on Instagram, 37.8k followers on TikTok. His business page, TBM's Instagram page, has 2.8k followers. His Facebook group for TBM called Tattoo Guardians Business Coaching for Tattooers, Money, Mindset and Clients. Uh, this is a private Facebook group that has 2.1k members. His podcast, Tattoo Guardians podcast, has 42.1k subscribers on YouTube. The podcast that he hosts is also co-hosted by someone called Joshua Carlton and Hip. The about part for the podcast says, decades of experience shared with a common goal leave the industry better than they found it. He also has done a couple of episodes with his wife, Katie Stratton. I come across this podcast episode called Facing 25 Years to Life. Life, Matt Clemmer's story part one and this is episode 76 of the podcast. This was uploaded nine months ago. Uh, today's episode is uh, riddled with pain, with life, with adventure, uh, with ups and downs. And then on this episode he kind of talks about his life or how his life started out. He talks about his childhood and his upbringing. When we were kids, we grew up down on Delaware Avenue, downtown Dayton. Right now, it's a gated community. It's considered rough, the ghetto, right? Was that Five Oaks? 
It's right up Delaware and Salem Avenue. He talks about when he was a child, his family had a farm. And when he was pretty young, he started working on the farm. Yeah, five or six. At the time I was five and six, I was riding on the side of the tractor and combine. He then goes on to talk about how he experimented with drugs from quite a young age. And became wild. I became a wild child, child like a lot of us do. Like Hip became one and when he was a young boy too. It don't matter. You can have loving parents or whatever. That doesn't mean that you might not turn out to be wild as hell. And how many seasons I've been through in my life where I did hardcore drugs for a duration of time and then was able to just set it down and walk away. And I think it's because most times I wasn't in escape mode from my life as much as an artist wanting to go on an Alice in Wonderland type of adventure. Yeah, you, you told me a story of, of uh, your younger brother, uh, Bart, ha had like a trap house allegedly back in the day. Mm -hmm. And like there were dudes like smoking crack and you were hanging out with the crackheads like smoking crack with them for the fact to like experience... Well, yeah. allegedly, Bart had six dope spots in the city with his homie. Bart's my little brother, one of the five. Trying to create, I all have always been about inclusion, no matter what I was up to. Parties, drugs, you name it. I was always the guy that wanted everyone to be happy. You know, you, you've heard stories like when I'd buy drugs, I'd buy enough for me and the whole fucking party. If I'm going to a party, I'd bring enough for me and the whole party. Matt then also talks about the time that he went to jail for three days. It's the first time I ever got arrested and I did three days in jail. None of that changed my heart. It didn't make me think, oh, I got to straighten up. I shouldn't do this shit no more. It just made me think I got to be smarter so I don't get caught like this again. Mm -hmm. Right. It didn't change my heart, just my mind. He then talks about the time where he was on the run from the law for a year because he was facing a hefty time in prison. In 1995. Well, now I'm fucking giving my age away. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the run for a little over a year. You know, back then, my mom's house was raided. My grandma's house was raided. And there's fucking detectives and SWAT teams scouring the city, raiding my mom's house. My Look anywhere I could be staying, turning it upside down. Well, I wasn't in the city. I was fucking, you know, on the run. Mm -hmm. And at the time, they were like 15 to 20 years, you know, if not forever. But after 15 years, you know, you're not like the hottest on the radar. And I just remember thinking, well, I'm going to be running the next 15 years, but probably the rest of my life. Well, that got old and tiring. I was charged and on the run for 14 accounts of armed robbery. Robbery of what? Banks, <laughs> pizza joints, <laughs> like you name it. We hit licks, boy. <laughs> it then leads up to part two. So this was a two-part podcast. The title for this is This Has to Be Bullshit, Matt Clemmer's Story Part 2, and this is episode 77. In this episode, he talks about the fact that he eventually handed himself in and he didn't get any prison time. He was just on probation. You know, I thought I was going to prison for life that day. I didn't have to go in for one, right? I was so just, I mean, it was unspeakable joy, amazement that guys, I was so on fire. I showed up to probation, like stoked on fire every day. And guys, I wasn't even on probation a year. And my probation officer started writing letters to the judge for me saying, this dude don't even need to be here. Throughout the two episodes, Matt talks a lot about religion and God, about being spiritual. He's definitely a very spiritual guy. I'm not religious or spiritual in any way, but I do respect people that are. You know, you do you boo, it's your life, you believe what you want. But the way Matt does speak about religion, and God, and being spiritual is very... It's quite out there. And I just start going into praying, right? And guys, it was like God himself showed up to fucking bitch slap me. And did. was basically showed up and was like, and basically was like, Matt, what are you trying to earn, purchase, or obtain that I have already earned, purchased, and obtained for you as you on your behalf? Listen, Matt, I appreciate your heart, but you're not God. And you're not supposed to be. I don't need you to be. I ain't trying to be. I want you to be free like a little boy and go out and fucking enjoy your life. And in that moment, he downloaded a complete new vision in me. Anyway, now that we know a little bit more about Matt and who he is as a person, let's take a look at what else Jordan has to say about Matt. 
TBM is a giant cult for tattoo artists. I know plenty of people that have taken it and been scammed by it. And sure, any cult is gonna have some good stuff in it because why else would you join it? So I do know people that have benefited from it, but it costs thousands of dollars and it's a glorified 12 set program. And it is a giant cult. In fact, Matt's other company, Landmark Forum, in which he based his tattoo business mastery class on, has been banned in the country of France because because the government has decided that it is an actual cult. <sighs> it's it's a lot, right? So first things first, let's talk about TBM, which is Tattoo Business Mastery. I wanted to take a big, deep dive look into this. I was hoping to find a website or more information about this business, but it is seemingly impossible to find out any information. The most prominent websites that do come up when I search Tattoo Business Mastery is Instagram, Linktree, and YouTube. There is no official website that comes up at all. I have a feeling that there used to be, but there isn't anymore because of the rumblings that are coming about when it comes to what's coming out about Matt and how this business is run. On the Google search, this come up, so I clicked on it. And this is the website for Matt's tattoo studio. And yeah, this TBM form is dead. It's like this whole thing has been wiped from the internet. It's very suspicious. On the link tree, there is seminar payment link, Facebook group, a TikTok and Instagram. The seminar payment link asks you to just send $300. For what? There is no explanation whatsoever. The Facebook group is the one that I talked about earlier, which is called Tattoo Guardians Business Coaching for Tattooers, Money, Mindset and Clients. Jordane mentioned the word cult in her TikTok, right? Rule number five of this Facebook group is keep your cup empty. This means to be and remain coachable. It's giving let us manipulate you vibes. You know what I'm saying? That sentence and that rule to me is very red flag and sure maybe it is all just about tattooing but I feel like I've seen words like that when watching Netflix documentaries or true crime you know the TikTok has a few videos not many and they are your generic motivational speeches with added emotional music you are not alone and you do not have to go through any of this alone and it's usually all our own limiting beliefs that are not serving us. It starts with our brain, our thoughts, and, and our decision. That's from a place of power. Everything in me's growing, everything in my life. And then the Instagram is full of pictures with motivational quotes. It gives the vibe of pyramid scheme. I can show you how to make $300 million in 30 seconds finance bro kind of vibes. I'm sure you know what I'm on about. So from the little that I've learned about TBM, the vibes that I'm getting from this is the fact that it is similar to Launchpad. If we remember back to Tattoo Gate, where a tattoo artist by the name of Lindsay Joseph was scamming her clients out of a lot of money. She was charging for consultation fees, design fees, and then you know, should you want to change the design, you have to pay more money. She learned all of this from something called Launchpad, which was launched by a tattoo artist by the name of Russ Abbott. He basically has one of these types of businesses where he teaches tattoo artists to make the most out of their studios or their businesses you know, how to charge more money, how to run the business and all of that. It's that kind of vibe. I feel like TBM might be a little bit more culty, you know, like... It's, it's a bit suspicious. From the TikTok segment that we just watched from Jordan, she mentioned something called Landmark Forum. I had absolutely no idea what this was, so I took a quick look into it. Jordan said that Matt is a part of it. He doesn't run it, but he's probably taken a few courses or so from them. But he has also based his business, Tattoo Business Mastery, off of Landmark Forum. So Landmark Forum is a motivational organisation aimed to help people with their lives and, you know, motivate them. Their website says this, the Landmark Forum is designed to bring about positive permanent shifts in the quality of your life in just three days. These shifts are the direct cause for a new and unique kind of freedom and power, the freedom to be at ease and the power to be effective in the areas that matter most to you. Quality of your relationships, the confidence with which you live your life, your personal productivity, your experience of the difference you make, your enjoyment of life. So Jordan said that this organisation was banned in France 
And I was like, wow, okay, let me see if I can find any information on that. And, um, oh, so I come across this website that says, years back, two French journalists infiltrated the Landmark Forum with a hidden camera capturing the mysterious and innovative techniques which managed to turn people into dazed, jargon-laden, prosel... I cannot say this word. Proselytizing. Proselytizing? Wow. Anyway, automatons in no more than three and a half days. You're an arsehole, unalive yourself, kick yourself, get cancer. This was told by the seminar leader to a middle-aged woman who was wondering how to manage her relationship with her daughter. And albeit evidently wrong in her very guarded approach to men which she had tried to pass on to her daughter, these words were clearly not the right way to advise her. So the footage that was recorded was made into a documentary, one that didn't see the light of day, as Landmark Forum allegedly tried to stop it. So that's obviously a lot, and that is just disgusting. And yeah, I mean... I'm all for people doing what they want with their life. You know, if a motivational three-day event helps you out, whatever. You do you, boo. But if they're treating people like this to try and help people, I'm not for it whatsoever. That is messed up. And maybe this was a one-off thing. Maybe it is all rainbows and butterflies and positivity, but sometimes things like this are incredibly toxic. Anyway, it's nice to know that Matt was inspired by an organisation like this to then run his own company based on it. Anyway, back to Jordane's TikTok. Jordane then goes on to talk about the fact that two of her friends were falsely accused of roofing Matt and he then talked about it on his podcast. That's not anywhere near the worst thing that he's done. Um, the big reason that I'm on here is because he came for my friends and you don't come for my friends. I'm a triple Taurus. Met two of my friends at a convention earlier this year and then he proceeded to get too drunk one of the nights, then made a podcast the next day about how these two women roofied him. He decided to make a public podcast that lots of people listen to calling out these two women for roofing him when they didn't because he couldn't take responsibility for his own actions for getting too drunk and doing some dumb shit. This podcast was so slanderous and falsified that my friends filed a cease and desist and won. The podcast has been taken down. What did he actually gain from this? Other than being an absolute menace to society and making a mockery out of people that are actually roofied, that actually have horrible things done to them when they are roofied. Stating things like this that I assume were disproved very easily for what exactly? Content? Like, it's disgusting. False accusations like this are so incredibly harmful. Now, obviously, I don't know the full story, but something tells me in my brain, again, I'm assuming here, but something tells me something happened. That's married. Trying to blame someone for his mistakes or whatever. I don't know. <sighs> Jordan then goes on to talk about the fact that Matt didn't give money from a GoFundMe that he set up for his apprentice until he was pressured to do so. Also, most recently it's come to light that he did a GoFundMe last year for his apprentice who needed some dental work done, raised over $7,000, and this apprentice is only now receiving that money because so many people have harassed Matt into giving it to him. The, uh, the apprentice didn't receive this money because Matt basically started a GoFundMe on this guy's behalf just to take money from other people and never or give it never had any intent to give it to this guy as you can probably tell there are a lot of red flags when it comes to matt thus far so i'm not even shocked in the slightest that he would do something like this the fact that he charges thousands of dollars to join his 12-step program or cult whatever you want to call it and then the random 300 dollars payment that we talked about earlier and then the armed robberies from his past this man sure does seem to be all about the money jordan then goes on to talk about the fact that matt in the past has done blackface oh and let's not forget the pictures that have resurfaced of him doing blackface in 2006 pretending to be little john he tried to scrub those from the internet but they're not gone we still have those i did try and search for photographic evidence of this I couldn't so do take what she has said with a pinch of salt because I cannot prove what she is saying when I do videos like this I want to try and prove everything that I am saying and show you all the evidence that I have but I don't have anything for this but I don't have a reason to believe that she is lying like I don't know what she would gain from that to be honest so 
yeah so like i was saying there has been some rumblings on social media about matt here is another tiktok from mac wilson tattoo their tiktok is basically them warning people about matt and his business and how he is stealing money in this week's episode of people detrimental to the tattooing industry that i love and the people that i love if you've heard of this man you're in danger he's a predator i'm pretty sure he's in a cult he's stealing money he ain't giving the money to the people like he's supposed to be and you don't need a tattoo mastery class to figure out how to run your business this is a scam people he ain't the one this one's for my tattoo crew be safe out there there's also this tiktok from aura lillian where they talk about matt so disappointed there's been so many people i loved a lot that turned out to be shitty humans this year <laughs> and i um i think the only reason i'm posting about this here is because i know that i'm not the only one that feels dejected and defeated after trusting somebody especially in the tattoo industry around here right now um tbm i'm just gonna name it i know a lot of you guys are hurting and i just want you to know you have the magic in you you have all the sauce you need you don't need that motherfucker to be your guru you can manifest the fuck out of your life without him don't let him put a bad taste in your mouth for you and your own mind and your own power you don't need a guru he just needs you the caption for this TikTok says people will try to capitalize off the law of attraction and spin it as if it's their own. Just because that teacher was out of integrity doesn't mean that the laws of the universe don't exist. Take your own power back, manifest your life and move on from Matt Clemmer, period. Love you fam. Hashtag cult. There's a lot of the word cult being thrown around here. This now leads me on to the Facebook post that has been the catalyst of this video. This was the last straw when it comes to me making this video. This Facebook post was written by a tattoo artist by the name of Robbie Ripple. Robbie is a tattoo artist from Florida. In his pretty lengthy post, he talks about how he knows Matt and his time being a member of TBM. Okay, strap yourself in. This is a long read, but it is important to read if that makes sense. So Robbie said, last year I almost lost my shop largely due to me blindly following Matt Clemmer's teachings. I opened my studio three years ago. We got the keys three weeks before COVID shut down the world. Not ideal timing, but we trucked along. I did my best day in, day out, creating the studio of my dreams and hopefully other artists' dreams. I kept feeling like I wasn't doing enough, even though our numbers reflected quite differently and everyone close to me constantly reassuring me that I am smart, capable and successful. But I relented that I need help. I was deep in my imposter syndrome feels and couldn't be convinced that I was winning. Q Matt Clemmer, my saviour. I messaged him and he was so glad I did because he was about to reach out to me and a whole load of other stuff that he saw I needed to hear. And I went for it. Even though the things he was saying felt unaligned or just plain wrong, I was in need of a strong male mentor. You see, my dad was a great man, but not a sensitive man. And Matt decided he was going to provide me with the sensitive male mentor I needed and was so desperately seeking. That is A1 predatory behaviour. Let's give this man a false hope because he's successful doesn't realize it and pretend to be his messiah it felt weird but i was doing my best to be in a beginner's mindset and allow myself to lay my ego down and absorb the information and knowledge i so desperately craved i took the three month long tbm course and loved all the positive interactions with other humans and getting life and business lessons from my new mentor i developed what i thought was a strong bond with matt which also led to relationships with hip and josh carlton who are the co hosts of the podcast that I mentioned, two artists that I admire deeply. So I figured if these dudes are in with him, he's got to be rad. I met a lot of other great folks in the class as well, further solidifying my belief that this is where I needed to be under this man's guidance. The whole time the class went on and I followed his instructions, my books thinned out. My studio started falling apart and I was always greeted by Matt with how I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do, hence why my business was hurting. Just trust the process, I kept getting told. Or I would just be told to stop giving a fuck and that would help my business. So obviously a lot of 
odd and conflicting directions and my business was in a steady decline. My books thinned hard, my artists and apprentices leaving and I was still told to trust the process. So I did. Reluctantly and with a somewhat demeaning video of how he wasn't going to take no for an answer because we both know how bad me and my business need him, I signed up for his next level course because obviously I was missing something and needed more high dollar coaching. This coaching program honestly was cool for emotional support from my peers, not a way to improve my business. It had no curriculum or true direction and it surely did not reflect what I was sold nor did it deliver what the price of the promises map made. Also, I had other members reaching out to me to share the grievances about what they weren't getting from and watch them start to drop out of the program. I was being told he ignores them and they don't know how I get Matt to continue communicating with me. It's because I was a big name in the industry and his program and he wanted to use my reach and notoriety to expand his reach. After enough wanting needing and others sharing my stress and complaints, I then dropped out of his coaching program altogether. The time leading up to me wising up in the early stages of being coached, I went to do a guest spot at his studio. He kept assuring me I would book up my time. Well, I didn't. Most of the people that reached out about appointments couldn't afford the rates I was charging. That seemed odd because he was teaching the charge your worth concept and promised me they wouldn't balk. But the clients weren't booking anything in so effortlessly as he claimed should and would happen. I instead had one appointment which was someone from inside his studio. In the booking process this person let me know they couldn't afford my day rate but would be happy to book a half day. I consulted with Matt and he let me know if I didn't want to do half days I didn't have to. I told this person and they declined only later to hit me back up and speak with an entirely different language but still reluctantly signing up. This felt gross. So I reached out to Matt to let him know it felt weird. I asked if he intervened at all, which he assured me he didn't do. Well, that was a lie. Not only did he intervene, but he belittled that person until they felt they had no choice but to pay the rates I desired. I later found out that the person changed around a family vacation plans just to not make themselves look like an amateur, as he so eloquently told them. Basically, he couldn't let me see that this process was actually fallible. On the same trip, I brought up to Matt the idea of raising my rates even more to, get this, 10 thousand dollars a day. He excitedly reassured me that I could do whatever I wanted and this would be an amazing idea. He even said he would do it with me because it was such a winning concept. Thing is, I followed through. He did not. He didn't even tattoo anymore, so why pretend? Other than to make me believe in crazy fairy tales, thus making him my saviour. Before I dropped out, and to this day, I get lots of messages and phone calls from friends and reliable sources about what Matt truly thinks of me. Robbie's just uncoachable is what I heard a lot of. Uncoachable? If someone is uncoachable, you should tell them to their face. Not promise them they have to believe in themselves, ridiculously so, to charge $10,000 a day. And trust the process. If someone is uncoachable, you stop taking their money in exchange for coaching. Apparently, I was a negative topic of conversation quite a bit in Matt's regular life and shop. He told one artist, mind you, he introduced us. You're guessing at Robbie's shop, that's if he even has a shop in a few months and then laughed it off. I came to this man crying, scared, deep in my imposter syndrome and negative feels. He exploited me to gain views, told me what he felt I needed to hear and just discarded my need for love, true guidance and support. He saw what I needed and gave me similar experiences to the trauma I received in life growing and, and searching for male mentorship, further opening those wounds and forcing me to find ways to heal myself. He did not care for me, he did not love me and he did not show up in his integrity as he so often preaches. I've caught him in countless lies and watched how he spoke poorly of his students when they weren't around. If he does that about them, I know the things that were told to me on his feelings for me are true. So I could go on sharing more about my personal experiences with Matt, but I feel I've outlined the basis. He will seek your deepest pains, highlight them and use them against you. He will lie to get his way. He will pretend he doesn't know what you're talking about. He will gaslight the fuck out of you. He hides behind love and light and doing good in his world. But he's a charlatan, a snake in the grass, 
a fucking predator. Matt searches for the weak and wounded, which all of us are at multiple points during our life journeys. And he serves them what he believes they need to hear, but it's all empty. It's all fluff. There's no real substance. It's just beautifully regurgitated information with calculated terminology to get you to trust him. So if you're thinking about joining his coaching, do what you feel you need to do. I gained a lot of great relationships from his network of humans. The money I spent was worth the lessons I learned, even if that lesson is trust your gut and stay away from predators. But I could afford to lose that money. If you are looking for high level business coaching, this is not it. If your business is rocky, he will not help you come out of it. If you need to increase your profits, he probably won't help you. But if you want to be overpromised, underdelivered, victim blamed and gaslit to death, then check it out. I hope these words are received in the intention which I deliver them. I intend to help those who have had a similar emotional damage from working with Matt not feel crazy or alone or invalidated. My intention is to help as many people heal from these experiences with Matt and others in their life that made them question, am I crazy? But Matt had me questioning that a lot. And now after seeing all the dirty, ugly, hard truths come out about who he is to others, I feel I was not crazy. I was right when it started to feel mega icky following this clown. If you are suffering, don't hesitate to reach out. We will all heal and with love and support from others who are experiencing similar pain, we will heal together. Trust your gut, love yourself, don't let anyone dim your light. P.S. If any of this hits home, that's a good thing. It means you're ready to heal some of your past experiences and move forward into the life you're meant to live. Reach out to me or any resources you believe can help you heal. And then of course there are some comments on here. I'll give a couple of those a read. Aura Jane said, oh my god, thank you so much for bringing light to this. He had his assistants try to recruit me and I ended up in a really awkward Zoom meeting with around 28 others whilst he rambled on. When myself and a few others started asking about the structure of the course, he steered away for a minute. The only thing I got out of the one hour 30 minute zoom call it was still going when I left was that it was three thousand dollars to join he also conducted his meeting outside a bar nothing against doing that just if you're slamming down beers it's a little unprofessional now don't get me wrong I'm sure it's great to have the emotional and spiritual support but as far as helping you become more business wise I'm not so sure I'm sure it's good for some definitely wasn't for me I was left confused and ultimately extremely disappointed as I had high hopes as someone always wanting to continue to grow and become better. Nick said, I unfortunately had the same issue. There's no magical one to make people pay amounts they simply cannot afford. I'm digging my way back out now and I'm hoping to be back to where I was before my injury very soon. I have a lot of personal simul... I can never say this word. Similarity... Wow. Similarities. That's not how you say it, but we're going to go with it. With my experience through TBM, I met a ton of great people, people just like me, the broken, in need of mentorship and guidance. But in the end, I was left on the hook with no contact after my services were no longer needed. It really broke my heart to step away, but I had to. It was the only way to clear my conscience. I felt terrible for influencing others to take the course after I found out it wasn't the same thing I got. But when I said no to next level, all communication just stopped. I reached out to no avail. Hip always answered and so did Josh. And I am forever grateful for their friendship and their friendship of the brothers and sisters I made. But outside of TBM, the only thing we share is a bad taste in our mouth over what we all experienced after it was over. I saw Matt lie through his teeth ironically enough about him paying out of pocket himself if need be to fix our friend and brother's teeth. I'm still sad, but hey, it is what it is. Ruth said, I'm really glad I didn't go next level and stopped at the basic TBM. There's definitely a vibe that made me go okay, you got what you needed, now back away. Grateful for the people I met in class and the contacts though. Thank you for your post. Morvin said, I'm so sorry this guy got his claws in you. From everything I've seen about him, he really is just looking to build a cult of loyal people who will keep throwing their money at him to keep him happy. William said, damn, I really felt I was crazy myself and when I wanted to drop out of the class, I was made to feel like I couldn't and don't feel like I truly received what was promised to be delivered as well. I should have followed my gut feeling about this from the get-go but we live and we learn and I'm sorry that happened to you Robbie time for us to all heal much love Clay said I've heard a lot of crazy stories about this guy and his business and I'm sorry to hear you were taken advantage of Regan says I'm so sorry this happened to you I hope predators like this are held accountable one day but I know they just breeze into new scenes and crowds of new targets. I'm happy you have support system to help you bounce back from this. It seems that Matt definitely has a huge reputation of being scammy and cult-like. I don't know the correct terminology to be honest but 
He doesn't seem like a decent guy. He seems like he takes advantage of those that are in need of help because running your own business is terrifying. Nobody really tells you how to do it, especially within the tattoo industry. You know, you don't really go to college or university for something like that. I don't think they have a segment on opening up, you know, your own tattoo studio. The only way you learn about it is maybe through apprenticeships and stuff, but even then, maybe not. So I can totally see why vulnerable tattoo artists will be like a moth to flames when it comes to stuff like this. You come across someone like Matt that can promise you a lot of good things and help you with your business and succeed and make more money. It looks so shiny and inviting and promising, but when in actual fact, even though Matt says he cares about you and he cares about the tattoo industry, you no know he doesn't. All he cares about is the fact that he is getting money from you. The fact that he is charging $3,000 for a course and he's not really delivering what he's promising. How dare you take advantage of the vulnerable? How dare you take advantage of those people that are in need who are potentially losing their business and need help from you and they look up to you? Like I say in a lot of videos that I do like this, this is not what the tattoo industry is about. Charging thousands of dollars for a phony course where, okay, yeah, like people have said, they did get something out of it, mainly the connections from other tattoo artists that took the courses, but they didn't get much else out of it. To take advantage of tattoo artists and then teaching those tattoo artists to potentially take advantage of their clients because the tattoo artists are now charging thousands of dollars for tattoos is absurd to me. Absolutely charge what you think you are worth, but if you're charging thousands upon thousands of dollars, the average person, which are the majority of people that get tattoos, will not be able to afford to get the tattoos that you are charging for. I truly hoped that Tattoo Gate was gonna be the one and only scammy tattoo thing that I ever cover. But the fact that I'm now sitting here covering another tattoo scam, is just absurd to me. I truly hope that Tattoo Gate was a once in a lifetime kind of deal. But this one just feels even more sinister than Tattoo Gate because it does have this cult-like vibe. And while I hope there isn't many victims within this, I have a feeling that there is. And I feel like as days and months go on, more and more people are gonna start to feel comfortable coming forward and talking about their experiences with Matt and TBM, which is so dang heartbreaking because there is nothing worse than feeling lost and feeling like there's nobody out there to help you. And then to come across someone like Matt that can promise you the world and promise you shiny rainbows and that your business will be fine and you'll start making a ton of money. I just don't know how you could ever take advantage of people like that. I just don't understand it. Like what goes through people's minds when it comes to stuff like this? Like what gives you the audacity? What gives you the right? I just don't, oh God. I hate this so much because like I always say, there are so many good, amazing tattoo artists out there that just would never dream of taking advantage of people like this. This whole thing is just so sad and heartbreaking and the greed is insane. You can help people without having to charge thousands of dollars like this. And sure, okay, your time and your knowledge is worthy of being paid, but there's, oh, not like this. This is not what the tattoo industry is about. People's greed is leaking into it and oh, it's gross. Like, uh, what is happening? What is happening with the freaking world? Like it never used to be like this. Anyway, like I was saying, I feel like maybe more information will come out eventually. The fact that Matt's podcast hasn't uploaded anything in a month or so, two months I think at this point, that makes me feel like something's happening. What? I don't know, but... <sighs> hmm. Anyway, I'm gonna go now. I just wanna say thank you so much for joining me here today. I appreciate you all so, so much. And until my next video, bye.